Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my RPG Maker VS Ace video tutorial snippets. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a floor spike trap. Um, the first thing we want to do is make a new event and we're going to call it spike trap and we're going to make two event pages, right? So let me walk you through doing that. Not that it will really... So call the spike, um, make a new event page, um, first, um, second event page, actually back to first event page set the graphics that we want which is basically going to be the wall spikes so set the graphics that you want um for the spikes make sure that the first event page is a spike at its lowest and then make sure to set this to parallel process and make sure to change part priority to below characters second go to on um, the second event page set it to self switch a and we again make sure we set this to parallel process and make sure we set this to below um characters and then we set the graphics for when the spike is at its highest and nope that would not be it it would actually be this so now we have two event pages spike lowest spike highest and what we want to do is basically um the event commands we want to insert weight of 60 frames and then we want to turn on cell switch a control cell switch a copy this 100 percent paste it on the second page and oops and then go um, edit the control cell switch and set it to off instead of on so what this will do is basically cycle between on and off by itself so new event let's go ahead and test this out they should both be on the same timer as you can see it is working nothing is happening when i walk on top of it of course and i forgot to set the second page to be um to be below characters so let's go ahead and do that now so set it to below characters okay so now we have two do we need two no but um okay so now we have two you know what let's have three just for show okay after you've made your spike trap what you now want to do is set your character's location to a region id so how do we do that how do we set our character's location i mean how do we set a variable actually how do we control a variable to be the same as a region id of where your character is standing well that sounds more complicated than it really is so what you want to do is make a new event um i'm just gonna go ahead and delete this one okay what you want to do is make a new event um you could call a setter or you could leave it alone or you could leave the name alone event setter so what we want to do is definitely make sure this is a parallel process right that's a major thing right there make sure it's parallel process and then what we want to do is we're going to come down to control variable and then we're going to go ahead and um select um player x um you basically just um name the variable what you want uh, make sure it's a variable that you're not using of course um you should you guys should know how to work with this um i've already named it so i don't i don't have to name it again so um this one's called player x what we want to do is come down to game data we're going to set it to um game data and then we're going to go ahead and go to characters, player, map X. Okay. And then that's X is set. So now our player's X location on the map is being tracked. And what we want to do now is copy and paste that. And then we're going to go ahead and edit it. And we're going to come down to here um, to the variable. And we're going to change it from player X to player Y. We're going to come back to game data. We're going to click this three little dots and we're going to change it from map X to map Y. Now the players X and Y location is being tracked. So now let's see if this is working or not. New map or new game. Um, so right now I am standing, um, I have no idea. So let's check. So right now my character is standing at eight and four okay so if we move down here it should be eight and six i believe eight and six there we go and then if i move down again it's going to be eight and five or eight and seven because it's going down for some reason that's not how it works in real life it's supposed to be going down when i go down but anyways that's how rpg maker vs8 works apparently so now it's at um 11 and 10 so 
you get the point it sets our location wherever we are so then if we keep moving our x and y location is being tracked at all times now how do we use that to keep track of our region id and what do i mean by keeping track of a region id well let me show you a little trick that most new uh, makers don't know so go to um event commands um we're going to be in the same um setter event that we were in that we set our player x and y so we're going to go to the third event page why is it on the third event page and we're going to go to the map category and we're going to go to get location information um or location info however you want to say that so um so I'm using this one for something else. So let me go ahead and change this to rock. And then we're gonna make a new one called player region ID. So let me explain to you guys how this works. So um variable for info is basically um variable for info is basically the variable that the information will be stored in. And info type is the kind of information we are trying to store. So we're trying to store region IDs. Um, location will be um, the location on the map that, um, it's hard for me to explain this part. Location will be the location if the, okay, let me, let me do this. So I'm gonna open up this. So if let's say right here is region ID two, right like the location that i'm like clicking on is region id 2 and i just um selected it um the player region variable will be set to two and let's say i clicked over here and the region over here was three then this will be set to three so it basically works like that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit more complicated remember when i made it so that um the player's x and y location will be tracked well this is why um we're doing that so when we do it this way the um region id would then become dynamic like it is with the player x and y location so we're going to go ahead and change this to player x and we're going to change this to player y so now the player's x and the player y is being tracked and now the region id that the player is standing on will also be tracked because um it's being tracked by this thing right here so let's go ahead and test that out shall we okay so look at this real quick so it's four over here, five over here, two over here, three over here, and one in the middle. So let's go ahead and test that out. Let's test that out, shall we? Okay. So right now, if I looked at it, um, our thing should be zero. Our region ID should be player region. Oh, I'm actually sending on four. My bad. Okay. So now I'm not sending on any region ID. So right now, player region ID is zero. So if I'm standing on four, which should be here, I believe. Yep, I'm now four. And then if I stand in the middle, which is one, region ID will be changed to one. Do you guys understand how this is working now? If you don't, please leave me a comment down below and I'll try to explain it more. So right now I'm standing on region ID three, now it's changed to three. Um, okay, so now that we have that information, what do we do with it? Well, that means we can now um, control multiple spikes with just one command multiple spikes so if i take this and then i put this here put this here so this is our region id one and let's see what do we do hmm? what do we do what do we do what do we do what, what do we do so now what we want to do is select the middle um okay um quick note if you're going to have multiple spikes in multiple locations, um, you might want to use um, different region IDs um, for that, especially when you want to have them on different timers. You definitely want to have region um, different region IDs. So since all these three are going to be the same timer and the same everything, and they're basically all, all on the same region, I would just use the middle one to act as a controller. So middle one is the controller. Okay, so this next part, <clears throat> it gets kind of tricky, but it's really not. Um, this next part, we're gonna um, we're gonna get aid from a script because um, unless you have switches to waste, then you are gonna need this script for it. Um, but I will basically show you what we're doing with a switch, and then I'm gonna show you the script part of it. So what we wanna do is 
Again, um, we pick one of the random ones. It doesn't matter as long as it's one. I like the middle one because um, cause it's connected to both of them and it looks like it's dominating them and so whatnot. So middle one. So we, what we want to do is go to um, other um, to move a uh, movement type, and we're gonna set this to custom, right? And see this sixty and over here. Just you know what? We don't even need that anymore. We don't even need that anymore because I actually forgot. So um, so it's a minor um switch that we have to do. So instead of um, making this self switch A, um, you basically just make a new switch called whatever. Just in case you're not gonna get the script, you just um make a switch instead of self switch A, make a switch, and then basically just um basically just um set it to whatever switch you want, and then you come down here. Um, and then you wait um, the 60 frames and then you turn the switch off but we're gonna get the 8 from that script because um, it's uh, I don't want to waste my switches although this isn't really even my project so I'm gonna get 8 from script okay it is called Galv's Extra Move Roots so, so okay there we go that's what we need <laughs> so what this would allow us to do is basically it will allow us to control the cell switch from within the move root command so copy actually let me see hmm Okay, we're good. Whew, we are so good. It's not even funny. Okay, so back to this event. Um, just go ahead and delete this, both of those. Because I was, I was thinking about something else when I did that. So as, again, keep the cell switch A or um, change it to switch if you don't want to use the script. Um, and then change it to custom and then go to move root and then wait. 60 okay and then um select script okay here you have to wait 60 no matter what and then if they're using the switch just turn the switch off here but if you're using the script then just click on this little script icon copy and paste that code which is this um here we want to change this to capital a and here we want to lowercase spell f-a-l-s-e false and Ta -ta -ta -ta. We are done. So the reason for that is because we want the um we want the like we want this um event to constantly damage the player no matter what. As long as it's on this page, we want it to constantly damage the player. Um that's why we have to like um use this over here to make sure it doesn't like get in the way because um, it will basically be like this. It will damage the player if the player is on it. And then it's going to wait like 60 frames and then turn it off. And then that's going to interrupt the whole um, damage and everything. So we want to constantly damage the player. Um, so that's why we used um, the custom move root over here. And that's why we also used the self switch A. Um, before I continue to the next step, let me go ahead and just um, fix the other events. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and this. Change this custom. Paste that. I'm um, just go ahead and delete this one. Okay. So again, all three of them have, um, are going to be um, typically the same, except for the middle one. The middle one is going to be different. So now we are um, good to go. So all we basically just have to do now is check the condition um, for when the player is on the region ID that we are talking about. So the region ID will be region ID one. So what we want to do is insert a new command, conditional branch, go down to variable, uh huh, change it to player region ID, and we're going to set it to one. Okay, so if the player is standing on, if the variable is set to region ID one, which will happen when the player is standing on any tile that has the region ID one, now um, we want it to basically damage the player. Change MP, decrease by 15. Entire party doesn't really matter. 
Okay, so it's decreased by 15, and we want the player to take a step back because we don't want the player to just stand there and take the damage. Um, one step backwards, or you could make it jump backwards or whatnot. Um, if you're using the script, you could, again, make the player jump backwards um, by using this, but make it and change it to negative instead of positive. Can you do that? I don't know. I've never tested it. But let's keep it at um, move once. So that's all we need to do. Right now, we are basically... The, ooh, not plus. Not plus. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Decrease. Um, allow knockout. Why not? So now, let's go test this out. This should work 100%. So, no matter where I'm, like, no matter which one I'm on, it's going to work. See? I'm damaged. I'm not damaged. Now I'm damaged. I'm not damaged. Now I'm damaged because I was standing on it. And as you can see, my health is going down. Health is going down. Health is going down. And if I go on it from this way, health is going down. Health is going down. Okay, as you can see, yeah, if I do it from the middle one too, health is going down, health is going down, health is going down. Of course, I could walk by them if I want to. Health is going down no matter which where I am. So, what does that mean? That means that these events don't, um, they actually don't matter at all. Like, they don't do anything. The only one that matters is the middle one. Um, that also means if I just re um, use region ID and just like make this whole line oops and made a whole line of this event okay why is this giving me problems so that means no matter where I am on that line the event is going to affect me so I can walk by it now I can't walk by it if I stand on it stand on it yeah, see, and that's basically how you do it. Um, you basically just make the um, event over here for vis visual representation, represents representation of the um, spike actually happening. But it's only happening with this one event, and you don't even have to make it that one event. You can make it another event that's somewhere else. <laughs> and that's how you make a floor spike trap thingy thank you guys again for watching make sure to tune into the next episode i do which i don't know what it's gonna be on anyways make sure to hit that subscribe button to be updated every time i release a new video make sure to hit that like button because it helps me out a lot i am taking the time out of my day to make you guys tutorials to help you on your game Oh, it goes up to 63. Now I know. And no one is definitely not have to battle. Um, yeah, make sure to like this um, video. Make sure to up, uh, subscribe for more for more updates, I guess. I will come to you instead of you having to look for me. I will just come to you um, when you subscribe to me. And also make sure to leave a comment down below for any tutorials you would like to see. Um, invent tutorial. I mean, script and tutorials. Mm. I'm laying low on those, like I'm I'm just gonna not do those for a while, but more event tutorials and stuff like that. I am definitely your guy for now. So yeah, thank you guys again for watching. Peace.